When it comes to diabetes, food choices can feel overwhelming and sometimes even paralyzing. Every meal, every snack, and even every small bite can feel like a decision that has big consequences. Cheese is one of those foods that sparks debate and curiosity because it doesn't behave like the foods we normally associate with diabetes management. People often wonder, if I take just one bite of cheese, what happens inside my body? Will it immediately cause my blood sugar to rise, or is it neutral? Before we continue, I'd like to tell you about Diacelon, a powerful blend of 13 natural ingredients, each carefully selected for their proven ability to support healthy blood sugar levels, enhance insulin sensitivity, and promote overall wellness. You can read more on diacelon.com. For many people who are living with diabetes, there's a fear that almost everything they put into their mouths could lead to unstable glucose levels. That anxiety is understandable because keeping blood sugar within a healthy range is critical for avoiding both short-term symptoms and long-term complications. But here's the important truth. Cheese doesn't act like bread, rice, soda, or sweets. Its effect is much more complex and subtle. In this video, I'll take you step-by-step step from the very moment that first bite touches your tongue through the process of digestion, insulin response, and even the long-term health implications. By the end, you'll understand not just whether cheese is safe in the moment, but also how it fits into the bigger picture of diabetes management. Cheese is mostly made of fat and protein and very little carbohydrate. That fact alone makes cheese very different from the foods most people worry about when managing diabetes. Carbohydrates are the main nutrient that directly affects blood sugar because they are broken down into glucose and quickly absorbed into the bloodstream. A single bite of cheddar, mozzarella, gouda, or Swiss cheese typically has less than one gram of carbohydrate, so little that it's almost irrelevant when compared to something like a spoonful of rice or a piece of fruit. With those carb-rich foods, blood sugar rises quickly, insulin is triggered, and you feel the results in a short amount of time. But with cheese, the immediate effect on blood sugar is minimal, almost like eating a handful of olives or nuts. Still, your body doesn't just ignore that bite. It has to process the fat and protein, and those nutrients influence digestion, insulin, and even energy levels in ways that aren't always obvious. This is why cheese often feels filling, steadying, and different from a sugary snack. It's metabolized on a completely different timeline. As soon as you take a bite of cheese, digestion is already beginning in your mouth. Enzymes in your saliva start breaking down the proteins into smaller chains called peptides, which is the very first step in protein metabolism. This process may sound minor, but it primes your stomach and intestines for what comes next. Once you swallow your stomach acid and enzymes like pepsin, go to work on the proteins, breaking them down into even smaller pieces, while bile from your liver helps emulsify the fats. Unlike carbohydrates, which can be broken down into glucose molecules within minutes and absorbed almost immediately into your bloodstream, proteins and fats require much more time and effort. This is one of the reasons why cheese tends to keep you full longer than eating something like a cracker or a piece of candy. For people with diabetes, this slow digestion is often beneficial. It prevents sudden spikes in blood sugar and instead provides a gradual, sustained energy release. It's like the difference between pouring a cup of water into a sink all at once versus letting it drip in slowly over time. Because cheese is so low in carbohydrates, it doesn't cause the rapid blood sugar spikes that most people with diabetes are trying to avoid. That's why many nutritionists and dietitians recommend cheese as a stabilizing snack option. But while cheese doesn't act like bread or pasta in terms of carbs, it's not completely neutral either. Protein, when eaten in larger quantities, can eventually be converted into glucose by the liver through a process called gluconeogenesis. This conversion doesn't happen quickly. It's a slower background effect that might influence blood sugar a few hours later rather than right away. That means a single bite won't do much, but if you eat a lot of cheese in one sitting, say several ounces, that protein load could eventually contribute to a gentle rise in blood sugar hours after the meal. Many people with diabetes don't realize that their later glucose readings could partly be influenced by protein-heavy foods, not just carbs. So while cheese is often considered a free food in small portions, the bigger picture is more nuanced. Your pancreas also plays a role in what happens after eating cheese. Even though there's little carbohydrate, 
the protein still stimulates your pancreas to release some insulin. This is because insulin isn't only for managing glucose. It also helps your body move amino acids, the building blocks of protein, into cells where they can be used for growth, repair, and energy. At the same time, the fat in cheese slows down the overall digestive process. This slowing effect means that if you eat cheese with other foods, say cheese with bread or crackers, the carbohydrates from those foods are absorbed more slowly. This can be good in that it prevents a sharp, dramatic blood sugar spike, but it also means your blood sugar could stay elevated for longer afterward. This delayed effect explains why two people can eat the same number of carbs, but the one who pairs them with cheese or another fat might see a completely different blood sugar curve on their glucose monitor. For diabetes management, understanding this delayed impact is important because it changes not only how you eat, but also how and when you check your glucose levels. One of the biggest concerns about cheese has nothing to do with short-term blood sugar and everything to do with long-term health. Cheese is naturally high in saturated fat, and while one bite won't cause harm, repeated large portions over months or years can impact cholesterol levels and heart health. For people with diabetes, this is especially important because the risk of cardiovascular disease is already higher. Cheese in moderation can fit into a healthy diet, but a lifestyle built around heavy cheese consumption could gradually worsen insulin resistance and contribute to heart problems. It's easy to underestimate this because cheese feels satisfying and doesn't spike glucose immediately, so it can feel safe. But health isn't just about what your glucose monitor shows you in the next two hours. It's also about protecting your heart, blood vessels, and metabolic health over the long term. A bite here and there is harmless, but the overall pattern is what truly matters. It's also worth highlighting the benefits of cheese, which are often overlooked in the rush to focus on fat and sodium. A single bite provides calcium, which is essential for strong bones and proper nerve function. Cheese is also a concentrated source of protein, supporting muscle repair and satiety. Certain cheeses even contain vitamin D, which plays a vital role in immune health, mood regulation, and bone strength. On top of that, fermented cheeses contain probiotics that may support gut health, and gut health is increasingly recognized as being closely tied to diabetes, since imbalances in the gut microbiome can contribute to inflammation and insulin resistance. So while cheese shouldn't be seen as a miracle food, it does provide nutrients that support overall health in meaningful ways. For many people, a small serving of cheese can actually improve diet quality, especially if it replaces more processed or sugary snacks. This leads us to the topic of portion size, which is where many people with diabetes get tripped up. One small bite of cheese is very different from eating several slices or half a block. Cheese is calorie dense, which means even small amounts pack a lot of energy. It's easy to underestimate how much you've eaten, especially when cheese is part of a social meal or snack platter. In small portions, cheese provides protein and calcium without overwhelming your system. In larger portions, though, those calories and fats can add up quickly, contributing to weight gain and increased cholesterol. For people with diabetes, weight management is tightly linked to insulin sensitivity and overall blood sugar control. That's why dietitians often recommend keeping cheese servings to about one or two ounces at a time, enough to enjoy the flavor and benefits without tipping into excess. Cheese also interacts with other foods in powerful ways. If you pair cheese with a piece of fruit like an apple, the fat and protein in the cheese help balance out the natural sugars in the fruit, creating a more gradual rise in blood sugar. This combination leaves you feeling fuller and more satisfied than the fruit alone, and it keeps your glucose levels more stable. The same principle applies when you eat cheese with whole grain crackers or vegetables. It transforms a simple snack into a more balanced mini meal. This is one of the reasons why cheese shows up so frequently in snack recommendations for people with diabetes. It's not that cheese itself is magical, but it acts as a buffer for the carbs you're eating alongside it, helping to smooth out your glucose response. Learning how to combine foods like this is one of the most powerful tools in diabetes management. Not all cheese, however, is created equal. Processed cheese products like individually wrapped slices, cheese spreads, or flavored cheeses often contain additives, extra sodium, and even hidden carbohydrates in the form of starches or fillers. 
These ingredients can make processed cheese less healthy, especially for someone managing blood sugar and heart health. On the other hand, natural cheeses like cheddar, mozzarella, gouda, feta, or goat cheese are usually much lower in carbs and higher in quality nutrients. Some people also find that goat and sheep cheeses are easier to digest than traditional cow's milk cheese. For someone with diabetes, choosing less processed, higher quality cheese can make a significant difference not just in taste, but also in how your body responds. Sodium is another factor to consider when it comes to cheese. Cheese is often salty, and while one bite isn't going to cause a problem, frequent or large amounts can contribute to high blood pressure. Since diabetes already raises the risk of heart disease, managing sodium intake is extremely important. Too much sodium can cause your body to hold onto water, increase blood pressure, and strain your heart over time. For people who already have hypertension, cheese can add to the problem if eaten in excess. The solution isn't to eliminate cheese altogether, but to balance it with plenty of lower sodium foods like fresh vegetables, whole grains, and fruits. That way, you can enjoy cheese in moderation without putting extra stress on your cardiovascular system. Finally, we need to talk about the psychological side of food because this is often overlooked in discussions about diabetes. Cheese is enjoyable, satisfying, and comforting. That emotional satisfaction can play a big role in preventing cravings for less healthy foods. For example, if having a bite of cheese helps you avoid reaching for cookies, chips, or soda, then it's actually supporting your diabetes management in an indirect but powerful way. One of the hardest parts of living with diabetes is the constant sense of restriction. If you feel like you can never enjoy the foods you love, it becomes harder to stick with your plan long-term. Having small satisfying foods like cheese in your routine helps reduce those feelings of deprivation and makes it more realistic to maintain healthy habits. So what really happens after one bite of cheese? The process is surprisingly calm and steady compared to eating carb-heavy foods. Digestion starts slowly, your pancreas releases a small amount of insulin to handle the protein, and the fat begins to slow digestion overall. Blood sugar stays relatively stable, with only minor effects hours later if you eat larger amounts. The biggest factors aren't what happens from a single bite, but rather how much you eat, what type of cheese you choose, and how often it shows up in your diet. One bite by itself isn't harmful. It may even help balance blood sugar if paired with carbs. But when cheese becomes a large daily part of your diet, other issues like calories, fat, sodium, and heart health come into play. The bottom line is this. You don't need to fear cheese if you have diabetes. A small amount can be a satisfying, nutrient-rich addition to your meals, providing protein, calcium, and satiety without spiking your blood sugar. The key is moderation, choosing higher quality natural cheeses, and paying attention to what you eat alongside it. When viewed in the larger context of your eating habits, cheese can absolutely fit into a diabetes-friendly lifestyle. The important thing is not to obsess over one bite, but to look at your overall diet and how foods work together to support your health. Balance, variety, and mindfulness matter far more than whether you do or don't take a single bite of cheese.